Okay, hello. This time we're just going to do something fun. Who will give Scroll Flight her nine lives? You know, the ones she's totally and definitely going to get. This is fun because Scroll Flight has been alive for most of the main series. She has a million options for this reason, more than even Bramble Star had because she's been alive for like, I don't know, five-ish more years than him at this point? I mean, five-ish more years than he was when he got his lives. Not in real life years, obviously, it's been much longer than that in real life years, but either way, she has spent a lot more time as deputy than him. So who would it be? Well, let's see if I can't solve this with a little bit of common sense and a little bit of statistics. Before we even start, though, I'm going to be wrong. Anything could happen here, and it's likely she doesn't even receive lives. Let's cover some statistics first, just because I spent so much time compiling all of this. There are 15 cats, not counting Riverstar, whose book isn't out yet when I was writing this, where we see a full leader ceremony. In no order, these cats are... Tiger Star the first, Blue Star, Misty Star, Crooked Star, Fire Star, Tall Star, Leaf Star, Broken Star, Bramble Star, Pine Star, Wind Star, Tiger Star the second, Black Star, Leopard Star, and One Star. I made a spreadsheet for this to see everyone's relations and attributes. It's only really usable for this video, as for some attributes, I consolidated the concepts. For example, Windrunner has a really weird ceremony. It's written very strangely, and I'll argue that's because the Star Clan cats didn't know what they were doing yet, but I'd argue more so that it's the first leader ceremony that the new team ever wrote. Willowtail gives Windrunner the grace to forgive all cats, but she's not really giving her grace. She's giving her forgiveness, so I marked it down as being forgiveness. Grace is an attribute of the forgiveness, not an attribute of the life. Willowtail didn't give her both grace and forgiveness in, a, in the same way that Blue Star gives Firestar nobility, certainty, and faith at the same time, because the grace to forgive isn't grace in all things, it's only grace in the matter of forgiveness. That said, despite the fact that courage and bravery are basically the same thing, I did list them as separate concepts. Meanwhile, Petal gives Windrunner a life for loving friendship and loyalty. It's kind of one attribute, but it's harder to consolidate. So you could consider this one two separate but incredibly similar things. Branch tells her, I give you the confidence to open your heart to other cats. I give you trust, which sounds like two things if you take it at face value and don't apply common sense, but the confidence to open up your heart to other cats and trust are the same exact thing. That's one concept, trust in other cats. So for a lot of these, I just used common sense as it applies to me. A life for love is not the same as a life for mother's love. They are two separate things, even though they both have love in them. But the grace to forgive I put down as forgiveness, because it's forgiveness. Meanwhile, Pine Star gets two separate lives for judgment. Their judgment of different things, but he gets two of them. So even though if either of those judgment lives had gone to someone else, I probably would have not put them down as anything but judgment, because both of them went to Pine Star, I had to differentiate them somehow. So again, this is really only usable for my video, it's not exactly a resource. So a thing to consider when deciding what Squirrel Flight will get and who Squirrel Flight will get them from is a bit of a pattern with leader ceremonies. Obviously, most of the gaps are filled with people who died during their lifetimes, but there's a few things that they tend to have in common. I'm going to go over some of that and hopefully not take up too much time with it. In an ideal world, the lives that these leaders are getting are things that reflect on them, but in practice, it seems really only the evil leaders get lives that reflect on them or better them. They get a few that reflect on them or imply something about their life, but at the same time, they mostly get very general concepts that could apply to anyone becoming leader. Often it seems that the life's attribute has a lot more to do with the person giving the life and not the person receiving it. And obviously, this is partially because a lot of these lives are just simple, one-word concepts. Stuff like strength, compassion, loyalty, love, acceptance, it's basically horoscopes for warrior cats, where you could squint and apply them to basically anyone you know. And you start to see immediately that the evil leaders who get lives, um, or the problematic leaders who get lives, people like Broken Star, uh, the more recent Black Star, Tiger Star the First, 
their entire lineup is a lot more telling than any of the good people. Granted, in Blackstar's case, every single attribute was associated with a memory, which made it a lot easier to apply it to his life. Out of the 134 lives that are given in full ceremonies, only 41 involve cats the Receiver didn't know. 63 are from she-cats, and 71 are from toms. When it comes to gender ratios in individual ceremonies, 9 have more toms than she-cats, and 6 have more she-cats than toms. No ceremony has more than 6 of any particular gender. Additionally, in ceremonies that are dominated by female cats, usually there's only one more than the male cats. But in ceremonies dominated by toms, four of them have six male cats and three she-cats. Bramble Star's ceremony has the most women. And Black Star, One Star, Crooked Star, Leopard Star are all tied for the least women. Somewhere around 45 of them are from warriors, 14 are from medicine cats, and between 33 and 31 of them are from leaders, depending on if you count Pine Star and Rowan Claw. When it comes to family, Firestar is the only leader who doesn't get a life from a family member. Eight cats get a life from their fathers, and seven get a life from their mothers, with Misty Star getting two moms. Who gets a life from mom or dad isn't mutually exclusive, obviously, and quite a few of them get both. Three cats get lives from their dead children, Windstar getting two, five get lives from siblings, four sisters and two brothers, and Tigerstar the second gets to double up on siblings. Five get lives from their mentor, but in the case of Bramblestar, Firestar, and Bluestar, their mentor was also the previous leader. Three also get lives from their apprentice, and Leopardstar is the only cat to get one from her apprentice and her mentor, which it's pretty sad for her, I guess. When it comes to antagonism, Blackstar got three lives from cats he fought with or killed, and one star got a life from Mudclaw. Meanwhile, Windstar gets a life from a cat who seemingly abandoned her. Otherwise, largely the ceremonies are just made of cats they were on good terms with. Everyone meets a leader, if you count Stone Teller as a leader, which I am, and of them, only seven meet the directly previous leader. This won't be relevant to Squirrelfoot if Bramblestar is stepping down and not dying. Nine of them meet a medicine cat. Of the nine that meet medicine cats, about a third of them meet more than one medicine cat. With Tigerstar the second meeting four of them. Four of them include cats that are implied to not be in Star Clan and are just visiting to give a life. That's Mole and Tallstar's Revenge, Leafstar's Mom and Sky Clan's Destiny, Feathertail and Ravenpaw in Bramblestar's Storm, and Pine Star in Tigerstar the First Ceremony in the Ultimate Guide. I'm not including cats who show up in Windstar's Ceremony for this because it's kind of a nebulous area. There are eight cats in Leader Ceremonies that are totally made up and appear nowhere else, but only three Leader Ceremonies that include them. Tiger Star has one, Crooked Star has four, and Broken Star has three. That said, Broken Stars could be attributed to, like, Dawn of the Clan cats or something someday, but for now, all we know is that they're a brown cat, a black and white cat, and a gray cat. Five ceremonies include cats from Dawn of the Clans without being Dawn of the Clans series, and two include cats that only appear in field guides. We haven't seen any field guide exclusive cats since Vicky left the team, though. Blue Star is the cat who shows up in other people's ceremonies the most, appearing in four ceremonies. Silverstream is second, showing up three times, and after that there's a handful that show up twice. Badger Fang, Cedar Star, Dawn Star, Feathertail, Grey Wing, Hail Star, Lionheart, Oak Heart, Pine Star, Ragged Star, Sage, Whisker Spotted Leaf, Stag Leaf, Stone Fur, and Yellow Fang. As for attributes, the most common thing to give a life for is some form of love, at 11. But make that 12 if you count Windstar and Petal's weird thing. But if you consider love, mother's love, and love for kin as three different things, the most common life between these 15 cats is for compassion with nine, followed by courage and love tied at seven, loyalty and judgment tied at five, not counting clan judgment and self-judgment for Pine Star, but it would be a six if you counted those as one thing. There are four lives for forgiveness, hope, patience, strength, not counting a mother's strength, and trust. There's also a few you'd think would be higher, like only three lives for faith or faith in Star Clan or general faithfulness, only a single life for wisdom, and only a single life for humility. Meanwhile, there's a few that are just a bit weird. Three cats got lives that boil down to doing what's right, even though that is, you know, a, a good attribute, 
and more lives about trusting in specific concepts than just trust in general. Nearly all of Tigerstar the First lives are for very specific concepts. Firestar is the only cat to get three things in one life, and seemingly Windstar also received two concepts at once, depending on how you define some of her lives. Some of the weirdest ones are Bramblestar not getting a mother's love, but instead understanding for a mother's love, whatever went on between Tigerstar the First and Whitetail, and Blue Star getting a life for humor. I think they should have given that to Tigerstar the Second instead. Out of the eight lives from mothers, seven of them have something to do with love. Only Misty Star's second mom life, the one from Blue Star as opposed to the cat who raised her, decides to be about something else. Otherwise, every single mother gives a life for love. The lives from fathers are much more varied, with only one repeat, Stag Leap and Rowan Claw both giving strength. Additionally, of the other assorted kin, one Kit, one of the four sisters, and one of the two brothers gives a life for love. No fathers, meanwhile. Kinda weird, warrior cats. A little bit strange. So that's a lot of potentially boring information that I just dropped on you. But who's dead and important to Squirrel Flight? The truth of this is, almost everyone. One of the cats that will certainly be there is her father, Firestar. Not only is he Firestar, doomed to show up in every ThunderClan leader ceremony until the end of time, he's also dad. The second I feel is absolutely guaranteed and completely undodgeable is Leafpool, who is unquestionably the most important cat to her for her entire life. Sandstorm is also very likely, although I can see a world where they leave her off, especially if they kind of pair her up with Firestar somehow. Because in some ceremonies they seem to see some cats as groups or couples or just loitering around the edge. Another cat I can't imagine not showing up, and if she doesn't it's a huge missed opportunity, is her adopted daughter Hollyleaf. She carries too much personal weight not to. It would be especially strange when Bramblestar already didn't receive a life from her. Otherwise, there are quite a few general candidates with some level of importance. Her two kits, Dandelion Kit and Juniper Kit, would probably be consolidated into one life. I'd put my money on Dandelion Kit as Juniper Kit died as a newborn. Uh, let's, let's hope that they remember this. <laughs> Someday, just for me, I hope that they look you in the eye in the books and say, Oh yeah, all kits who died stillborn or as newborns, those kits, um, they get to be a little bit older in Star Clan. They get to be a bit older than a newborn. And they don't run around as creepy little creatures. Squirrel Flight's mentor, Dust Pelt, is also dead. But getting lives from mentors is kind of rare. I think one of her apprentices, Fox Leaper Rose Petal, would have been slightly more likely, especially seeing as Rose Petal died recently, if Dust Pelt didn't have massive first dark nostalgia power over them. And I would argue that Dust Pelt isn't really of that much consequence to Squirrel Flight's character. They simply don't spend much time together on screen. But the new team doesn't know that. Feathertail, as the only dead member of the cats who journeyed in the new prophecy, seems like another likely candidate. Although she would be a repeat of a member in Bramble Star's ceremony, so I'm not really sure if they'd lean into that. Granted, no matter what, we are seeing a repeat Firestar here. And then there's Graystripe, who basically died in Squirrel Flight's place after delivering a message to Ashfur at the end of the last arc which feels pretty important thematically. Meanwhile, there's also cats who died during her lifetime who weren't her kin. Moonlight isn't out of the question, for example, with how they were willing to make allowances for cats like Leafstar's mother, Branch, and Mole. Especially considering how much interaction the sisters have had with Star Clan as an afterlife. Lark Song would be a bit of a strange choice, but not unheard of, seeing as she literally came back to life with a message from him for Sparkpelt. He might be there and say, thank you for what you did for my wife, or something. Cats like Purdy, Briarlight, Sorreltail, Ferncloud, Mousefur, Stemleaf, Cinderpelt, and Berrynose could also make surprise appearance. <laughs> what am I saying? Yeah, Berrynose could show up. Things said by people who would be very, very wrong to say them. They might also include Shrewpaw, but if they do, I'm considering it 100% just fan service. They really barely interacted in canon. If Bristlefrost had gone to StarClan instead of disappearing into the void, she would probably be involved in this. I can't imagine she wouldn't be. But she's very dead. 
Double Dead. Another looming concept is those Dawn of the Clans cameos. In the last few ceremonies written by the new team, most prominently One Star and Leopard Stars, the clan founder has been involved. It could be argued that they were there to fill space, but I wouldn't be surprised if Thunderstar showed up. I'm not particularly convinced that other weird cats will show up, however. All ceremonies with field guide cameos are from the Vicky era, and they largely seemed like they were filling space um, without a lot of options. But Squirrel Flight is made of options. Additionally, first art cats like White Storm, Blue Star, Yellow Fang, and Red Tail might show up just because they can. Gray Stripe and Firestar being there might be able to fight them off, though. As far as attributes go, like I said, the attributes a life gives are really general. But it seems they often have more to do with the character giving the life than the recipient. Evil characters and characters who do bad things receive lives that correlate with lessons they need to learn, but good characters seem to just get generically good attributes. Additionally, leadership ceremonies created by the new team are much more likely than the old ones to give out simple one-word attributes as opposed to general concepts. When I say that the lives they're giving are more to do with the character giving them, usually it's because the character giving that life needed to learn that lesson or died because of a lack of use of that lesson more so than anything. Running Wind gives a life for energy because he's the one who runs around. Tailbird gives a life for mother's love because she's a mother who love. Graypool gives a life for a mother's love because she's a mother who love. Golden Flower gives a life for understanding a mother's love because she's a mother who love. So without further ado, here's who I think will give her lives and three things I think they might be for. This isn't a question of who I want to give her lives, but instead me attempting at a very wrong prediction. Additionally, I really don't feel like there's much rhyme or reason to the order of lives, aside from vaguely often the previous leader being the first, and occasionally the most important or shocking life being the last. So these aren't in any particular order. Secondarily, I will only be guessing attributes that already exist. While it's very likely that they are going to come up with some new ones, especially seeing as this is Squirrel Flight, I think working within this restriction to guess is more fun. The first life I assume is happening is Firestar. And my guesses are, A, a life for quote-unquote doing what's right, which might be unlikely seeing as all the doing what's right lives are from Vicky books and not the new team. Guess number B is a life for courage, which would be the same attribute he gave to Bramblestar, but it seems generically suitable for Firestar to be giving this one out. The third is a life for perspective, which has shown up quite a few times recently in books and seems like a fitting one for Firestar to give. The second one that I'm absolutely sure of, like I said before, is Leaf Pool. And I think Leaf Pool will be giving a mother's love. More so than Squirrel Flight's own mother, Leaf Pool seems most likely for this. In fact, Leaf Pool seems like she'll be giving out a mother's love ten ceremonies from now to her great great grandkids. But if something absolutely wild happens and this isn't the case, my second guess would be empathy. This is less a statistical idea and more so suitable for Squirrel Flight and Leafpool's relationship. Or trust, reflecting on how much trust she had in Squirrel Flight. From Squirrel Flight's mother, Sandstorm, my first guess is love. Almost every mother gives this one away, so I can't not include it here. But I think that Squirrel Flight will be getting a love-related life from Leafpool, and I can't imagine them doubling up on loves of all things. Well, okay, yes I can. But let's pretend that they wouldn't. My second guess is loyalty. Oh, jeez. Whoa. My second guess is loyalty, which seems like a trait that Sandstorm would give out as written by the new team. Or, possibly, determination. It doesn't seem right for Sandstorm to be giving out anything too flowery, but at the same time I'm unsure of what exactly the new team thinks of her. Should I re-record these? Should I be re-recording um, the sky being angry at me for talking about Squirrel Flight's Nine Lives ceremony? No. I think it's funny. I, I, every time something like this happens, I think it's too funny that it happened to begin with to remove it from my video. This is the overly casual and unpolished atmosphere that everyone's here for, I think. Hollyleaf, meanwhile, feels easy and hard at the same time. Tons of common attributes could be from her. I think that the most likely is forgiveness, but close contenders are judgment and survival. 
any of these concepts could get applied and work somehow. Holly Leaf has got a lot going for her on the potential life distribution side. Which is another reason I'm pretty darn sure she's just gonna be there. Dandelion Kit? Or Dandelion Kit escorted by a scary newborn Juniper Kit, I think is almost guaranteed as well. While only seven different kits show up in these overall, not including the second time Badger Fang does, all four leaders who had previously given birth met their dead kits in ceremonies. I think the most likely attributes for Dandelion Kit's life are hope, acceptance, although the implications of that are a little miserable, or assuming Leaf Pool or Sandstorm didn't take it, some sort of love. I know it sounds like a cop-out, but one of these darn cats who are related to Squirrel Flight is giving her love. Now this leaves four more lives, which I think will be granted by cats unrelated to Squirrel Flight. The first is Graystripe, who I think the book would struggle not to include if the authors remember a light in the mist at all. Loyalty is definitely the most likely life from Graystripe. Um, I don't know what it would imply for loyalty to be the most likely life from Graystripe, because the team seems to see him vastly more loyal than he's ever been written. I think the second most likely from Graystripe is Compassion, which, while it's from She Cats six out of nine times, it's not nine out of nine times. And if we were to be fair to his character, I think a third option might be Humor, a trait only Blue Star received previously. The new team might not even be aware of it, but I'm sure that if they Google uh, Warrior Cat's life meanings every time they write one of these scenes, it might come up. Dust Pelt is the next cat that I think will be there. I think he's probably the least likely choice on the whole list, however. I think he's edging out a cat like Rose Petal by having the power of nostalgia, which is the new team's favorite weapon, and by being a Tom, unfortunately. I think in the case of Dust Pelt, patience is his most likely trait, as in the patience he needed to train Squirrelpaw. Endurance could also come from him, although it seems much more Vicky aligned than new team aligned. Strength, which is a very, very common attribute in these, is also a very dust-pelty life to give out. Something I didn't mention earlier, however, is that strength has never been given to a she-cat. Not once. Even a cat who got the strength of a mother was a tom. So if Scrollflight got strength from anyone, she's the first woman to get it. My next guess is Yellowfang. This list is quickly filling with first arc cats, but I feel like her relevance to Squirrel Flight's story is inescapable, and she's Yellowfang. And the new team wants to put as many first arc cats in here as possible. She's already shown up in two ceremonies, and I think she'll keep showing up until her spirit is erased. For Squirrel Flight, I think she's most likely to give... Faith or some form of faithfulness. Considering how much StarClan messed with both Leaf Pool and Squirrel Flight, this seems relevant somehow. Secondarily, she might give out forgiveness again like she gave to Tiger Star the second. Tiger Star the second. She did not visit normal Tiger Star, obviously. And if they really want to be sassy and make tons of warrior cats scream in terror, Yellowfang could give out judgment. The final cat I think will show up is Thunderstar. They seem to really, really love having the clan founder show up and letting the cat receiving the life go, whoa! I think the life he's most likely to give out is Pride or Clan Pride. While Clan Pride specifically has only been given out in field guides, I think Thunderstar would be most likely to be used representationally instead of in a character way for Squirrel Flight Ceremony. Alternatively, Unity, which they've used twice recently on Black Star and Leopard Star, feels thematically appropriate for a Squirrel Star who might be interested in a war with Shadow Clan. And my third guess for Thunderstar is a generic courage attribute, because of course. And that's my nine lives predictions, assuming she gets any. This is going to be a really weird video if Starplane shoots her down with lightning instead of giving her lives, like it's been doing to me! Now, if I was in charge and allowed to do anything that I wanted within the realm of it still seeming proper, the first thing I would do is switch out Thunderstar for Moonlight. Moonlight had an actual, tangible effect on Squirrel Flight's life, and she spent a lot of time with her. If I were to assume the kinds of lives Moonlight would give out, I'd imagine selflessness or a weirder attribute like Tiger Star's awareness of the outside world or Bramble Star's calling out injustice. Although it'd be a little strange for Moonlight to give out calling out injustice, even though Squirrel Flight's whole arc involving Moonlight was about calling out injustice, they also then, you know, have Moonlight's whole culture thing residing in the background. 
Second thing I would do is switch out Dust Pelt for Purdy. Sorry to all Dust Pelt fans. He just has absolutely nothing to do with her in practice. Meanwhile, Squirrel Flight spends a lot of time with Purdy in both the New Prophecy and the Power of Three before they bring him back to ThunderClan. That said, the attributes Purdy might give out are a little fuzzy in my brain. I'd really like for him to be there, but what kind of attribute would Purdy give? Maybe acceptance? because he always seemed like such a go-with-the-flow sort of cat. Sense of adventure could work, seeing as they met him twice while on adventures. Or maybe patience, because uh, he was awfully patient with, say, Crowpaw. And the third thing I would change is switching out Sandstorm for Briarlight. Just because Briarlight's a lot more interesting. S sorry to all Sandstorm fans. Sorry to all Dustpelt fans. Sorry to all First Arc fans. I also think attributes that Briarlight could give out are pretty obvious. Endurance would work really well. The life of finding happiness that Misty Star gets from Silverstream could probably be repeated. Persistence, survival, strength, or compassion if they want to take the easy way out. Maybe I'd switch out Dandelion Kit for somebody like Rose Petal as well, and then she could give a life for a good mentoring or something. But, but we'll see what they do. We will see if Squirrel Flight gets struck down by lightning.